Australia. Hyena. Hyena. Apparently the Maestro is pretty good as well, and the Hyena is rated as one of the better Group B cars. Yeah, I uh, actually no, I've driven Group B the first few times. Group A is probably my least driven up until. So Group Two and Three, I've speed ran. Three not for a while, but Two was primary speed run target. Group 4 was uh, the competitive one. I did Group 3 when I first played Art of Rally. What's that? Uh, Art of Rally Championship. Uh, group B, I've pretty much only driven for the Art of Endurance stuff. Group S is probably the one I've driven the least outside of Group A. I did a couple of speedruns of it at one point, but it's never had a championship in it, so I just haven't really driven it, but that will change.
and of course in a couple of days I'll have driven everything in every class. Can't wait for skidding through here in Australia um, in Catface Group A. Ooh, spicy. Oh shit. I was watching a bike race. This one keeps buffering. Our reliable 480p backup. Ooh, that's not good. Bit of a sketchy bit on the corner. Wet. Yeah, it's going to be insane through here. I do hope that Nept looks at Frankie's idea, which was a slightly more endurance focused uh, for slightly more stages. It'd be cool to have at least six, and then get uh, get one stage, one of every stage for Australia. Really show it off. For this pay to win championship. It is cool that like uh, Australia being the last is probably for the best. For one it gives people the most chance to actually practice it if they need to. But also uh, It means you can just kind of lock the rally at round four if you want to. Like, see if you don't have Australia, just see where you came after round four. Oh yeah, the Aussie DLC is worth it. I think the the mo the complaining from people was mostly because you got the same amount of content as free DLC with Kenya and Indonesia and the car updates and stuff like that. I think that's where most of the complaining came from, but realistically it's well worth it. And it's it's even more worth it. I kind of just said right, so I've had a load of free updates since I bought the game. Bought the game when they first announced the Kenya uh, update. Oh no. Yeah, Polar Color had just come out when I got the game. I'd been like putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And finally it's like, oh, holy shit, Kenya. They're updating the game, blah, blah, blah. Some other stuff happened and I saw some other stuff and I got the game. I think there's some people who wouldn't have complained too much if Kenya and Indonesia had cost money. Because it would have just set the standard. I think it's because the standard changed. 
but at the same time like, I, I just justified it by going it's a, it's a decent deal for the price to amount of content in here you know it's not nothing spectacular unless you're gonna grind Australia but you know if you're happy with it it's nothing happy with pre-Australia I think most people playing would probably be happy if they never even released Australia. You know, there was enough content. People, I think it would be perfectly fine if they didn't release Kenya or Indonesia. That's bonus from what the game was worth at the start. But also, you get... Like, imagine if Australia is the charge for all of the DLC. Effectively. Because that's what I... like. That's what I've effectively paid for, is I got the game before Kenya and I've had a load of free updates and then Indonesia uh, and then Australia. See what do I do if they do add more tracks to the game? What what happens if another country comes out? What am I supposed to do then? Guess I just gotta grind that country again. Change the name of the challenge. Yeah, I mean it wouldn't take long to do a country. Actually it'd take longer to do a country than it would to do a class. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, it'd take longer to do a country than it would to do a class, unless that class is logging. Because you've got to do all the classes, ten classes, for a country. So a country will be longer than a class, for sure. Even the shortest country will be longer than the... Uh, than the longest class, I think. But it would, with one more country, it would actually get more even, to be fair. Because there'd be nine... Nine to ten. Nine countries, ten classes. So you might be able to get a short country... might be uh, in everything might beat out a mid class but it wouldn't beat out a group A I don't think a few people have been talking about well, it kind of died down, but a little bit ago, talking about modding in more stages and getting the, um, if possible, getting the old stage editor working for the for the updated game. Now, if there's community content, that's where it would get brutal for me trying to hundred percent stuff. There already is a really long hill climb, it's called Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya in the logging truck.
people all want longer and longer stages but you're not willing to put the work in to actually play oh but that car's too slow what so just make the stages longer then you'll just be complaining that there's not a lot of stage or variance in stage it's just long Logging truck's great. Cute woo lift back. If you've got the balls to keep that foot to the floor, you can get all the way around to here. Foot flat. Just pure. It's going to come down to remembering the corners and just remembering which ones do you have to slow down for. 
and which ones can you get away with just lifting a little bit and just full sending. If you hear hay, but see hay bales, it usually means third. Balls. Australia is pretty good. I really liked Kenya. I really like Kenya. I remember when it came out, I was still playing through the uh, the campaign. And I was, I literally reset to try and get Kenya when I was playing through the campaign. And I hadn't quite, for some reason, at the time, actually yeah, so I was still playing through the campaign, but I think I was in Group A or something at the time, maybe Group S. I remember when it, I hadn't for some reason worked out fucking custom rallies. It, I literally just blanked on custom rallies until I started playing uh, the competitive stuff. Because I literally went into... Gr I wanted to play Kenya in the uh, the Africa car. The fucking... The Group 3 Porsche 911i or whatever it is. The one that's got the, uh, the racks on the top of it and the spare tyre and everything. That classic Porsche. And, um... Yeah, I literally went in and started resetting for Kenya in career mode. It wasn't until Indonesia where I learned you could just, you know, go in custom rally. So when Indonesia came out, custom rally. Yeah, Indonesia, I did it in four lots of sixes to do every track in Indonesia when it first came out. Did it in different cars, like, but, uh... Then Australia... I think Australia, I still, even though you could do 12, I think I still did it in sixes just to use more cars. Or maybe I did tw I think I did 12 in Group 2, actually, so that I could play through all the Group 2 in the dry, get times on all of it. This is pre the speedrun changing to 12 tracks. Um, think it's dead. Also, not long after Kenya came out, I started speedrunning Group 2. 
uh, just after I finished the game. Pretty much the next thing I did. Um, group 2 and Group 3. And while I was speedrunning Group 3, I had this serious uh, thought that the game would know what rally was on in the real world at the same time and would prioritise that rally, give it a bit extra because genuinely I got Kenya so much which sucked because it's a really really long slow country to get and in group 3 you've got no real chance of making it because it's only got two short stages and anything else is kind of shit That was a shit stage. Oh shit. <laughs> Come on. There we go.
You fucking... Oh no, never mind. I'm an idiot. I was going to say, how the fuck did I just beat the rain? Beat that in the rain, but I didn't. The previous one was in the rain. It was in the rain, and this one was dry Indonesia, faster than Australia. Right. Cheers for watching. Cheers, Tabo.